Hi, good morning everybody. This is Jean here. Jean True Love from True Love Quilts for You. I have just finished my Back to Basics quilt. I've done a step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step tutorial on how a very, very beginner with a very basic machine could make this quilt from beginning to end. Um, I was challenged, perhaps, <laughs> by several of you because I have a square corner border to make a squared corner binding. As you know, if you followed along, you guys who know, I like to curve the corners of my quilts. I like the look. I think it's softer. And for sewing ease for myself, it's much easier. I've done, I've done a million tutorials on how I do curve my corners. Um, how I cut them and then how I put the binding around without using bias binding, using a straight grain binding. Just relax, relax, ease, ease, ease around a, a, a nice soft curve. However, this quilt, as you see and have, as you followed along, it has a border that is a, um, an actual print that goes up into a square. So I challenged myself because I really didn't know how to do it well, and I don't think I did it real well, um, to do a mitered corner binding um, on obviously all four corners. Um, what I do, oops, oh, there's my phone. What I do is I do sew my binding to the back of my quilt. I sew my binding to the back. I machine stitch everything, and then I turn my binding over to the front. Now, a traditional method of using of doing binding is you sew the binding to the front of your quilt, and then you turn it over and you hand stitch it to the back. I don't do that because I don't love hand stitching. And as I say uh, in my tutorial to come or my video to come, um, I think again personally my machine stitching is much stronger. That's why I do it that way. Um, and I want to get it over with. So I, I chose this binding from my last video that you can see this deep purple, which I'm quite pleased about. It's a little bit different than what I usually, uh, which I, I usually choose, but because I have a very bold backing, I'll take some um, close up pictures of it. Um, I quite like that bolder binding and, and it sort of makes a nice contrast to the front. So again, maybe not a tutorial because I didn't do it incredibly well. Um, I was learning along with you beginners, but well, this one, I, I, I think I have to stitch this down. Again, I'm, 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 talk, I'm talking out loud because there's sort of a hole there. <laughs> so I guess I have to stitch that, that down. I didn't see other people do that, though. But I think I have to. Anyway, it's turned out really nice. Um, it's a very loose quilting. I quilted about every three to four inches or so across the whole um, quilt top. Again, straight stitch. No, no long arm, no sending it out, just straight stitching. So this was a really good, decent, basic quilt. Um, fairly decent size. This was longer rather than wider. So I had no trouble getting it into my domestic sewing machine. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I have a few things on the go. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be putting this up before or after my friend Jen comes. We have a, maybe a project that we are um, going to be embarking on, both of us, um, the same or a bit different. But Jen will be here, and again, maybe this, maybe she'll have been here by the time I put this up. But this project is done. I'm, I'm breaking out these quilts. I do have a, a few ideas for not such large projects coming up for the summertime, the spring and the summertime. Um, but I will share that with you. Again, Ian has just a few more sewing rooms that he's going to be showcasing. So if you um, have a sewing room or a sewing closet or a sewing table that you would like Ian, my husband, to share, send it in to True Love Quilts for You at Gmail, and he would be happy to do that. All right, folks, I'll say take some pictures of my finished quilt. Hope you love it. And again, thanks for following along and all your suggestions and all your love and all your kindness. All right, see you later, folks. Love for the true love.
trying to figure out these mitered corners. I, I, I know I'm making a big song and dance of it, but I really don't like <laughs> mitered corners. I've started my binding um, as I usually do down one side. As you can see, I have left my tail about seven or eight inches and I'm sewing to my the back of my quilt my two and a quarter inch binding which I've I've um, pressed in half nicely made a nice crease and putting the raw edge to the raw edge of my um, my bound as it were my, my stay stitched edge of my quilt here um, I've sewn down the one side and I did look at I did look at videos on how to how to do this. Here's my squared off corner. The reason I'm doing this instead of rounding it is because I got a lot of hassle from everybody saying, you can do this, Jean. Well, oh man, that's all messed up. Anyway, that didn't work. <laughs> so I'm going to try, I'm going to try to come back down and I'll meet you at the other corner and see what I'm doing wrong. Because I did watch videos and they make it look so easy. My goodness, my my curved binding is so much easier than stopping and starting and stopping. I don't know. Here's my next corner. Like there. Oh, mate. And apparently you're supposed to go... Oh, where's my foot pedal? Supposed to go a quarter of an inch to about there. Now I think my the, re, the problem was I didn't sort of back stitch. Maybe I needed to back stitch because all the stitches came apart. So there I'm about a quarter of an inch from the end, right? Pull this out and cut my threads. See, when I ran my corners, I would have been around the corner already. So now what you do is I have it like this in front of me, right? And then apparently you turn it back on itself like that, up like that, so the binding is straight with your edge of your quilt. And then you come back down. Oh, I don't know. You come back down, and then you stitch it on that, where you can sort of feel that quarter of an inch there, I think. I think because the other one messed up. So let me just carefully stitch this. And I'll stitch it a little ways and then I'll go back and see if I can turn it to the front what it will look like because my first corner was a mess. So I'm just going to stop it there for argument's sake. Now I'm going to go back to this corner and I'm going to see if it turns nicely. Oh, oh, maybe I did that one right. Oh, the back looks nice. So there's my back. Now, here's my front. So if I turn it, well, do I have to trim that? Do I have to cut that off? <laughs> hmm. Well, let me cut some of the threads. Do I cut that off? That that. Oh no, it's a pokey miter. So if I turn this over to the front, which I'm going to stitch it down, my binding to the front of my quilt, like that, then this one up here, oh maybe it worked. Goes uh, like how do? You, is that right? Oh, that's too much. It's still a lump there. Well, it looks okay, I guess. Not really. It's a big, big lump. So do I cut that off? I'm going to cut it off. Well, maybe not. Do I cut that off? <gasps> Go on, I, I can't hear you yelling. <laughs> do I cut that bit off? Well, may I, I don't know. So that's, this side works nice, but then when I go to pull this one down, well, I guess that's what it is. You just sort of shove that miter thing to make that thing right there to make that corner it's not real sharp is it is that like a mitered square corner I don't know if you can see that not really not really oh, I don't like this 
But I guess it look. I guess when it's all said and done, when I go to stitch it, it'll look nice when it, with the with the border coming up. So anyway, it's okay. I don't know if I've done that right. It looks better on the back. <laughs> you see that it looks quite nice. It turned over quite nice, but I'm not quite sure how to make that that nice sharp miter. You would go up like that and then come back down, but it's sort of a lump there. Sort of a lump. Well, maybe not. But like this. It has to, like, meet there. Oh, that's, there you go. Oh, that, that meet, met, like so. My fingers are in the way. Oh, maybe that's, that's as best I can get it. That's as best I can get it. And then I'll just turn it over and stitch the front down. Away. And I'm going to back stitch again, just to make a nice square stitch. Pull it out, put it in front of me, and then you fold it back up on itself so that the edge of the binding and the edge of the quilt are straight, and then you pull it back down. You pull it back down. So the fold is at the top and then you look at where that stitching was underneath right there and you start which is a quarter inch down and a quarter inch in. I have my two tails for my binding. I'm going to turn it in front of me this way and again as you can see there's about five inches there on the uh, bottom one on the left hand one and then about six inches or so over here on the right hand one and what I've done is I've cut a piece from the extra binding a little square like a little rectangle like that which is exactly the same width, obviously, as our binding. And with the left-hand side smoothed right up where, like, the seam would be, cut about, about uh, maybe, maybe I'll cut it a little, a little bit more because you want to have enough room to finagle the next seam that we're going to be doing. You'll, I'll show you. So I'm putting my piece of uh, spacer fabric, as it were, just on top of there. Okay, lining that up right there, like so. I'm not pulling anything. I'm taking my right hand piece of binding and I'm just smoothing, smoothing, smoothing. And this is where you be brave. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be cutting off this part here, the left hand part beyond the spacer fabric. You're gonna line your scissors up and you're gonna cut that right off like so. Okay, so now you have two ends of your binding, one here, remove the spacing fabric, and one here, okay? Now we're going to turn our fabric in front of us, like so, and we're going to take this top binding and we're going to open it up like that, okay? We're going to take it, here's the seam, we're just going to open it up with our, our uh, fold going that way and then we're going to take our bo our bottom and you're going to have to pull it up a little bit and again we're doing right sides together okay so I'm going to open this up like so and I'm going to put it down on there that little square by all means if you want to pin it but I don't have to pin it I can just hold it like that make it nice and loose and what I'm going to do right sides together I'm going to go from that Diagonal there down to this diagonal here. Just go slowly. You can see my square. I'm just going down to that diagonal underneath. Like so. Oops. Now before I trim anything off, I'm going to make sure ah, that it's okay. So as you can see, once all this rubbish is trimmed off, I can just finish stitching down my binding. I have
started sewing my binding, pulling it from the back to the front and using a machine stitch, which I quite like because my hand stitching is not near as strong or sturdy as my machine stitching and yes sometimes it does show on the back but I've always said it almost looks more professional that way as opposed to handmade and my stitches is nice and um, sturdy there so I've changed my thread to a darker purple it's a little bit dark but it's okay and what I'm doing is I'm my, I'm coming to my first corner here, okay? And as you can see, I'm pulling my binding out this way. I'm not pulling anything towards me. You don't want to stretch your binding towards you whenever you're sewing. You're always wanting to put it out, okay? So I'm pulling that out to the, the nth degree, tucking all that rubbish in. And my sort of um, um, guide here is I just want to enclose the blue of my gingham but keep that little pink if it if it goes off or whatever it's okay but I'm just I'm just trying to fold this in and I've the um my seam allowance and my binding width is allowing me to to aim so I see that little bit of pink there do you see of the design all right so now I'm coming down to the, oh, this, I'm coming down to the first curve. No, the first corner. Uh, I'm going slow. This has taken me twice as long as it would if I had curved the corners. But never mind, I'm doing it. Aren't you, aren't you proud of me, folks? So I'm turning this over. Now I think I just sort of scrunch it in. I don't know. I just sort of pull that out. It is sort of a square. Tuck that uh, like that. Now, do I go off of it, or do I just go to that point? Let me just go to that that point there. It's nice and straight there. I'm pulling this out. Now, where do I stop sewing? Do I go to the? I guess I go right into the, into the corner there. Okay, do I leave my needle down? Or do I stop my threads? Oh no, I have to, have to stop my threads. Okay. So I pull up and I trim. And then I have it in front of me. Yes, I'm using white bobbin thread. <laughs> so tuck that rubbish under there. And then I'll pull this out this way. And then that corner, you just sort of have to, I don't know, let me trim this stuff off. You just sort of come back on itself like that. Well, that's pretty good. And then I come down there. Okay. Let me just see along here. I quite like this color binding. It's nice. It's a bit different for a change. Okay, now let me just go back. Keep my needle down and see. Oh. Trim that off. Oh, I can't even see it. And from that. Oh yeah, there you go. So now do I do I stitch that? You guys, do I stitch that down? That corner? I would think I would. Or not. Oh, I don't know. It didn't quite match. Can you see that? Didn't quite. Maybe I'll try to do. But it's it's square. Look, it's square, guys. Okay, that's it. Take a picture because that's it. <laughs> and it matches up there. But maybe I have to stitch that there to to reinforce it. I don't know. But it looks nice. So there you go. Voila.
pretty good. That was pretty good. Yeah, I'll take a picture of that one. Oh, no, it's not. That's the one that has a big hole in it. Oh, well, whatever. Anyway, folks, I did it. I'm going to give my quilt a good press now. And I hope you're proud of me. All right. Ah, I need a drink. <laughs> love from the true love. See ya. <laughs>